I'm Abby James Witherspoon, and you are watching the Permanent Rain Press. Hi, everyone. It's Chloe with the Permanent Rain Press. Today, I am so happy to be joined by Abby James Witherspoon. How's it going? It's great. How are you? I'm doing well, thank you. I know we were just talking um, a few minutes before we started about your time in Vancouver, which we will get into in just a moment. But I wanted to start off with your on-screen debut. It was in 2015. You played a younger version of your Aunt Reese's character in Hot Pursuit. So when did you know that film and TV was a career that you wanted to have? Oh my gosh. I think I've always loved performing since I was really little. I did dance classes with my sister. And then when I went to elementary school, I did like all of the all school plays. I was a guppy in Little Mermaid and I loved it. Um, and then I also, I would always go on my aunt's sets and watch them filming the scenes. And I would go in Video Village and put the headphones on my ears and just watch forever. And I loved it. And then I was lucky enough when I was nine years old to get to play the younger version of my aunt in Hot Pursuit, which was an incredible experience. And after that, even though I literally was on set for one day, I loved it. And I begged my parents to let me get an agent and start auditioning. So I started doing that and then I got an incredible acting coach in LA and that's what I've been doing ever since auditioning and filming and yeah. We'll give your acting coach a shout out. Their name is. Well, Deborah Dion. I love her. <laughs> She's amazing. It's so nice. I mean, you're still early on in your career, but I mean, to look back and see kind of some of the people who helped you get to where you are today. And I mean, you have a really exciting project coming up. We can soon see yeah. you as Lizzie in Secret Headquarters. What can you tell me about your character and what drew you to this film? Okay, well, I don't want to give too much away, but um, Lizzie is a super fun character and I loved getting to play her. It was so much fun. I got to do a lot of stunt work, which was fun. And yeah, it's a super action packed movie. It's a lot of funny jokes. And I think it's a movie that families will love to watch. So prior to being cast prior to filming, were you familiar with the Spy Kids film series? Oh my gosh. Yes. I watched I think every Spy Kids movie when I was younger, I loved watching those movies. I watched them over and over again. Yeah, Carmen and Junie forever. I grew up with them as well. Um, I mean, you probably watched it when you were growing up, but maybe they were already released for, I'm thinking a number of years, but- I feel like <laughs> yes, they were. But like, I haven't seen the film in full yet, but from what I have seen, I feel like it's a next- generation mix between Spy Kids and the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Is that something that you might agree with? Oh, yeah, I would definitely agree with that. I think that in one of the breakdowns at first, when I was auditioning, it might have even said kind of similar to Spy Kids, something like that. So I would say. Yeah. Well, it's a lot to look forward to, as you mentioned. Uh, you got to work with Owen Wilson, Michael Pena. They are so accomplished in their careers. Did you receive any advice or learn anything from watching them work? Uh, I learned so much. It was crazy. It was incredible to get to do scenes with them. Um, I just remember Owen would, we did like some scenes where it was basically all the kids and Owen and he helped us with timing and everything and then Michael was literally the funniest person I've ever worked with in my life every scene he he would just do something that I had never seen before that was even funnier than the last it was so hard not to laugh I had to keep it in but it was a struggle so he's hilarious and he's so nice they're both so nice and fun to work with the bar is set very high now for your future co-stars, I'm sure. Oh, yes, definitely. And your directors, Henry Joost and Raul Shulman, they're known for their films in the horror thriller genre. So what was your experience like working with them on a more family friendly film? They were incredible. Oh, my gosh. They were so good at working with 
like kids, teenagers, tweens, you know, they were so fun. They had such a playful attitude on set and they really let us just explore our characters. And if we had ideas of what we wanted to do in the scene, we always got to do it and try it. Um, if we like didn't have that much energy one day, they got candy for us to eat so we could get our energy up. Um, they were amazing. And I'm so lucky that I got to work with them as one of my first like big projects. Nothing like a little sugar to to liven you up. But <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I just love how you mentioned how collaborative it was and they were open to improvisation. Um, for those people on the fence about tuning in to this movie, why would you encourage them to give it a chance aside from the stunts? Well, I think that it'll make you laugh. And I think that, well, the CGI is amazing and every part of it and the cast is great. The chemistry is amazing. There's just such good actors in this film and everyone worked so well together and it really, really shows in the film. So I would watch it if I were you. I would, this is a movie that I love now and when I was younger, I would love and I think I will love when I'm older as well. It's really one that I think you can connect with at any age, even like when you're older, transport you back to being a kid and being curious. And you mentioned cast chemistry, which I have to talk about. You spent last summer filming this in Atlanta. So what are some of your favorite memories from set and just getting to meet, meet and build that relationship with, I want to say like the core four, which is uh, you, Mamona, Keith and Walker. Yes. Oh my gosh. I loved getting to meet Momo Walker Keith and Kazai also who plays Big Mac they are amazing and I've become such good friends with them they're all my best friends now um we had such fun times on set like first thing in the morning we would go into the makeup trailer and we were all laughing and then I remember this one time um, one of our cast members got us scooters, all of the kids scooters to ride around because we were in this mall filming and Walker and I started assembling a scooter when we weren't really supposed to. We went like behind a wall and hid from everyone. And then we got in trouble for assembling the scooters. They were like, you could hurt yourselves, but we were determined also, of course, walking to Crafty with the, everyone and getting iced coffee and cheese sticks. <laughs> it was always fun. It was a fun time on set. I love how you mentioned Crafty. Shout out to all the hardworking people behind the scenes and got to keep the actors fed. What were some of like your favorite? So what was your favorite meal that you ate on set? Can you remember? I feel like like pasta. It was some type of pasta, ravioli maybe. I was so excited when I opened up my lunch and that was what was in there. I just love pasta. So yeah, when there was pasta for lunch, I was super happy. <laughs> yeah, even happier than I'm sure you already were just to be on set. Oh, but okay. <laughs> the cast is so supportive of one another. I know a few of you were out at the Adam Project premiere to support Walker yeah. and then you were just in Vancouver. So I know we said it before, but what did you get up to during your time in British Columbia? So I went to visit Momo, who's also in the cast of Secret Headquarters and Walker. I got to see him there as well when he wasn't filming. Um, and we did, I feel like we did everything there. We made TikToks, of course, but we also, we went to the suspension bridge. We went to a beach. I don't really know where it was. We went to Whistler, if you can count that as Vancouver. We went to fly over Canada, which was cool. I mean, we just did so many fun activities there and it was fun to see everyone again. And you also went to some kind of light exhibit as well. Yes, right? we did. I forget what it was called, but it was some photo gallery Momo and I went to and we took a ton of photos there and just walked around into each of the like photo booth rooms. It was super cool. And perfect for the Instagram, of course. Yes, we got a lot of content to post. 
So you mentioned Walker. Uh, he's here filming Percy Jackson. I know you also got to meet some of his castmates like Aryan. <laughs> so I have to ask, this is a yes, no question. No secrets will be spilled. But did you get to visit the Percy Jackson set? No, unfortunately, but maybe one day. Yeah, I know it's it's very like a top secret project filming in town right now. But I mean, hopefully he got to tell they got to tell you how filming has been going and a lot to look forward to. Yes, they did. It'll be fun. I can't wait to watch it. Another project that you'll be in is Boys of Summer as Sammy. You got to film that. Um, I know there hasn't been too much released, but what can you share about it? OK, I can say that it's a thriller movie and I mean it's going to be great it's going to be amazing and I think it's a film that everyone's going to want to watch I got to work with the most incredible people on that project I got to work with Julian Lerner I got to work with Mason Thames Noah Cottrell just a ton of other amazing kid actors so I'm getting super lucky to work with really talented kids who are my age who are coming up in this industry. I was going to say you've been so fortunate because there's been like these um, young actors in Secret Headquarters and now Boys of Summer and you just basically get to talk about the industry with them as well and the director on that project was David Henry, uh, yeah. Wizards of Waverly Place. What was it like meeting him for the first time and getting to work with him? Oh my gosh, David's amazing. And it was super cool that he was in Wizards of Waverly Place because I was like, wait, I recognize this guy. Um, and he was so good at working with kids, obviously because of his experience being a kid actor, he knows exactly how to direct us in the scenes. And again, he was super fun on set and made it a super fun environment. And you filmed this in North Carolina. Was that your first time there? I feel like I went to North Carolina one other time for like a night to do a callback, I think. But this was my first time like spending time in North Carolina. And we were staying in Southport, North Carolina, which is a super small town. And it was amazing. I mean, all the local People were so nice and welcoming to all of us. Now, in terms of future projects, are there any specific characters or genres you'd be interested in exploring? Uh, I want to do literally everything. I want to try everything. Um, I love comedy already. I know that I love that, but I want to do horror. I want to do more action because that's super fun. I want to explore drama. I mean, just everything. I also really want to be in a coming of age project because those are always my favorite movies to watch. So hopefully one day. What are <laughs> some of your favorite coming of age movies off the top of your head? Edge of 17 is the first thing I think of. I love it. It's a great movie. Yeah, that one is a good one. Um, now, I don't know if you've seen these comments on TikTok because I know they've popped up, but there is a show on Amazon Prime called The Summer I Turned Pretty. And you look like uh, Rachel Blanchard, who stars as oh Susanna. Everyone I saw on TikTok was like, you need to play a younger version of her if they do flashbacks. Everyone keeps commenting that on my TikTok, which is so funny because I watched the show and I loved it like a week before people started commenting that on my TikToks. And I will say I see it now, but when I was watching it, I didn't see it at all. So, but that would be incredible. And it would be incredible to be in the summer I turned pretty because that is an amazing TV show. I, I'm glad that you you also love the show. And I was, yeah, I think if you put the picture side by side, you can see the resemblance. But it's funny that it, it doesn't click until like some people tell you that. Yeah, everyone kept commenting that. And I was like, OK, maybe I really do because <laughs> a lot of people are commenting this. Yeah, confirmed. Uh, now, you and your sister, something really cool, you found did Abigail Draper Girl in 2019. Yes. So you were 12 and 13 years old, respectively. Uh, tell me about the inspiration behind it and what it's been like collaborating with Draper. Oh, my gosh. So Draper and I 
came up with the idea of Abigail Draper Girl after we went to this camp in Canada, actually, Montreal. And it was super fun exploring just entrepreneurship. But basically, our first line was called Simi Sweet. And the thoughts behind that is, as girls, we're taught to be sweet and kind all the time. And yes, we can be kind and sweet and respect, like respectful to people. But at the same time, we can be strong and confident and stand up for ourselves. So that's kind of what semi sweet meant. And also, we wanted girls to have voice, confidence and power. So it was we made t shirts and sweatshirts and sweatpants. It was so much fun. And we haven't done anything with it in a little bit just because we've been super busy with high school and diving Draper does diving and dance and cheerleading and acting of course but I really hope that we get into it again soon because it was so much fun just learning about being a business owner you're forgetting your third line you did have another one you had camp ADG yes Um, camp (laughs) ADG Do you have a favorite of the three lines that you've released so far? Uh, I love all of them. I think they're all so cute. I feel like semi sweet since it, since it's the OG line is my favorite. And we also made sweatpants with that and they're so comfortable and I wear them all the time. So semi sweet. <laughs> With you and Draper, do you, are you often in agreement when it came to like designing the different lines and choosing colors and styles? We were for the most part, but of course, I mean, we're sisters, so we had disagreements, but we would just tweak the designs for each of us and put stuff in there that we each liked and it ended up working out really well. And we like everything that we've put out. So I like it very like kind of civil. I'm sure your mom or your pet, your parents will be around if, if it gets to too much of a heated disagreement, but I'm glad that you two got to do it together because I think that's, what's so special about it. Oh yeah. It was so much fun. And we did a lot of pop-ups as well, like at different local stores in Nashville. And that was always a lot of fun to like promote our brand in person and sell stuff and set it up. It was a lot of fun. So what have you learned about being an entrepreneur in the fashion and lifestyle industries over the past few years? You know, taxes. There's a lot of taxes that go into it, which is unfortunate, but it's there. And also just staying on top of everything and always thinking of new designs and reaching out to brands. That was something I like didn't realize for some reason when you're making clothes, you have to reach out to stores and sell your products to stores. It's a lot of work, but it's a lot of fun. And your products have actually been in some local stores in Nashville. That's correct. Yes, they have. We have, or Yeah, we had our clothes in Magpie's Girl, which is one of Draper and I's favorite clothing stores in Nashville as we were just growing up. Um, And it was a lot of fun to see girls in our community wear our clothes. And I think it's just so impressive to see what you two have done, because like you mentioned, it's not like you're just doing the designs, but you're doing um, social media, checking inventory, actually helping your products get into stores and pop ups. Now, for the future, have you and Draper kind of like discussed at all? Like I know you said it's kind of been on hold. I mean, you've been busy doing filming in different and uh, different cities and different states. But in terms of like the future, have you kind of sat down and said, hmm, I might we might be interested in doing this in maybe within the next year. Yeah, we've thought about it a little bit. I mean, definitely just thinking of new designs and maybe different products. So stay tuned. Stay tuned. And we will be sure to link their uh, website and their socials below for Abigail Draper Girl. Uh, You and Draper also do promotional material for your Aunt Reese's brand, Draper James. How much fun has it been getting to create content with them? 
Oh, it's been so much fun. We were so excited when we got asked to do their summer campaign, the Draper James summer campaign this summer. And we finally fit in the clothes and we've been going to that store since we were so little and we've always wanted to fit into the clothes. So now we do. And so we got to do the campaign for this summer and we actually filmed it on the day we finished our last exam for school. I think I took a physics exam that day. So fun. Um, and so then we went and shot the clothes um, and we went to all these different touristy spots in Nashville. We went to the Hermitage Hotel. We went to Broadway, which is this street with a ton of like neon signs. It's so much fun. Um, and I've loved getting to see all of the videos release and the photos. I think it looks super cute and the clothes are adorable. It's like playing tourist in your own city for a day, but also very celebratory after Seguel, of course. And it's yeah. a name that honors your great grandparents. Um, we can see it in oh. your name and Draper's name as well. So it must be nice to kind of keep it in the family. Oh, yes, definitely. It's so fun that it's named after our great grandparents and we're also named after our great grandparents. So, yeah. Yeah, it works. Uh, we are a music based website, so I have to ask, who are you listening to on your playlist? OK, a ton of Taylor Swift. It's always been that a ton of One Direction again. OG. Recently, I've been loving the Lumineers. I love their music and I hope I get to go to their concert coming up in September in Nashville. Um, I'm trying to think who else. Beyonce. I listen to so such a variety of music. And then, of course, because I live in Nashville, this is cliche, but I love country music. <laughs> I can't not. I live in Nashville. I think it's like it must be impossible not to kind of be born there, grow up there and not have some kind of liking for country music. Who's your favorite country artist right now? I love Zach Bryan. He has a new album, which is really good. And Luke Combs also. <laughs> yeah, I have to throw those in there. Um, yes. And those are some great picks with One Direction. Who is your favorite member? If you had to pick one of the one of the five... Well, since I was since I've been young, it's always been Harry Styles. Always. We had Barbie dolls of all of them when we were younger and I drew his butterfly tattoo on a piece of paper and cut it out and taped it onto his Barbie doll. So, Harry Styles, of course. That's some dedication right there. <laughs> it is. It is. My sister's favorite was Zayn, and I always was like, I like Zayn, but Harry Styles is the best. It has to be Harry. Yeah, and it's so interesting because now you can see that he started out just with singing, and now he's an, an actor as well, and you seem to have a, an interest in both, so it yes. kind of fits. It does. It does. And our signature question for you to round things out, if you could be any ice cream flavor, which would you be and why? I would be, hmm, mint chocolate chip because I'm sweet, but I'm also a little chocolatey. So mint chocolate chip. <laughs> I love that answer. I, you were thinking about it, and I, it's we love the thought that goes into what people say. Um, and that's all I have for you. Thank you so much, Abby James, for Thank taking the you. time to chat. Really appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me. Of course. Well, hopefully we can catch up in the future. But until then, you can make sure to catch Abby James in Secret Headquarters. It is out August 12th on Paramount Plus, and we will see you next time. <laughs> Bye.